Welcome everyone to the first Doug Trucking in America, a career mode series. Before we get started, I'd just like to say thanks to Donut TV for putting my show on their channel. Well, here we are in Junction City, Kansas, picking up some recreational vehicles at Alamo, and we have to deliver them to another Alamo showroom in Hayes, Kansas, which is about 130 miles away, which is going to take us two hours, 15 minutes, hopefully. It's early 6 a.m. on a Sunday morning. I spoke to my boss, Jeff, last night, and he said, Doug, is that you? I said, yes, it was me. He sounded drunk, he continued. Doug, I was meant to pick up some recreational vehicles tomorrow morning and take them to Hayes, but I'm... Okay, I'm going to interrupt him there, like I said he was drunk, so then he said... Is there any way you can take the job for me? So I said yes, for two reasons. One, he was drunk, and I don't want him driving like that, and the second reason is he pays me, and I need the job. So here I am at 6 a.m. on a Sunday morning, picking up some recreational vehicles. I've talked to Steve at the gate, and he said the trailer is around the back ready to go. I have the paperwork, so all I have to do is hitch up and go. hitched up and off we go. If you don't mind, I'm going to play some music. This song is Fighting Another Day by Thyra. Heading back to what used to be home, passing by those little towns I know so well, stopping for gas and then I'm behind the wheel again. Driving this like a spiritual cleanse Where every mile is a new beginning And every bend holds a new end Eyes on the road, don't lose control I'm speeding fast to chase my soul I'm driving to get away Running through emotions high and low Holding on a leg For the sky, I had it all but lost and fell back down again. Spent my time playing the game where every single day was a losing battle and every drink was a dead end. Eyes on the goal, don't lose control. I'm living fast, I've lost my soul. I'm driving. Emotions high and low Holding on or letting go I'm fighting Another day Eyes on the road Don't lose control 
So we're on our way to Hayes in Kansas. So let me give you some history of Hayes. Before American settlement of the area, the site of Hayes was located near where the territories of the Arapaho, Kiowa, and Pawnee met. Claimed first by France as part of Louisiana, and later acquired by the United States with the Louisiana Purchase in 1803, it lay within the area organized by the U.S. as Kansas Territory in 1854. Kansas became a state in 1861. The state government delineated the surrounding area as Ellis County in 1867. In 1865, the U.S. Army established Fort Fletcher southeast of present-day Hayes to protect stagecoaches traveling the Smoky Hill Trail. A year later, the Army renamed the Post Fort Hayes in honor of the late brig. General Alexander Hayes killed in the Battle of the Wilderness. In late 1866, anticipating the construction of the Kansas Pacific Railway as far west as Fort Hayes, a party from St. Louis, Missouri, led by William Webb, selected three sections of land for colonization near the fort. In June 1867, to better serve the railroad, the Army relocated Fort Hayes 15 miles northwest to a site near where the railroad was to cross Big Creek, a tributary of the Smoky Hill River. Seeing a business opportunity, Buffalo Bill Cody and railroad contractor William Rose founded the settlement of Rome near the fort's new location. Within a month, the population of Rome grew to over 2,000. Webb, meanwhile, established the Big Creek Land Company and then surveyed and platted a town site, which he named Hayes City after the fort, roughly one mile east of Rome. The railroad reached Hayes City soon thereafter and constructed a depot there. The railroad's arrival, combined with a cholera epidemic, that hit Rome in the late summer of 1867, drove Rome businesses and residents to relocate to Hayes City. Within a year, Rome was completely abandoned. As the western terminus of the railway, Hayes City grew rapidly, serving as the supply point for territories to the west and southwest. As a frontier town, Hayes City experienced the kind of violence that gave rise to the myth of the American Old West. Several notable figures of the Old West lived in the Hayes City of this era including George Armstrong Custer, his wife Elizabeth Bacon Custer, Calamity Jane, Buffalo Bill Cody, and Wild Bill Hickok, who served a brief term as sheriff in 1869. Thirty homicides occurred between 1867 and 1873, including a deadly saloon shootout involving Fort Hayes soldiers. A cemetery north of town became known as Boot Hill by 1885. It held the bodies of some 79 outlaws. Hayes City became the county seat of Ellis County in 1870, and the town became more civilized. Rougher elements of the populace had begun to leave in the late 1860, many following the Kansas Pacific Railroad construction west to Sheridan, or moving south to Dodge City. Volga Germans started settling in Ellis County in 1876, finding its land suitable for their lifestyle and the types of crops they had grown in Russia. They brought with them turkey red wheat, a type of winter wheat whose cultivation contributed to the agricultural transformation of the region. Bukovina Germans began settling in the area in 1886. These groups had a significant impact on the local way of life, establishing Hayes as a regional center of ethnic German culture. Hayes City was incorporated in 1885, and in 1895 it was renamed as simply Hayes. Fort Hayes closed in 1889. In 1900, the Kansas delegation to the U.S. Congress secured the fort's land and facilities for educational purposes. The following year, the Kansas legislature established the Fort Hayes Experiment Station, part of Kansas State Agricultural College on the Fort Hayes Reservation, and set aside land for the western branch of Kansas State Normal School, which opened in 1902 and eventually became Fort Hayes State University. Fort Hayes opened as a historical park in 1929 and was later acquired by the Kansas Historical Society. In 1967, it became the Fort Hayes State Historic Site. Several disasters have struck Hayes over the course of its history. In 1895, fire destroyed 60 buildings downtown. Severe floods occurred in 1907 and 1951. In 1919, three standard oil gasoline tanks exploded, killing eight and injuring approximately 150 people. In 1935, the city experienced violent dust storms as part of the Dust Bowl. Hayes began to modernize in the early 1900 with a power plant, waterworks, telephone exchange, and sewer system complete by 1911. 
Over the following decades, the city evolved into a regional economic hub. Development of oil fields in the surrounding area began in 1936 with Hayes serving as a trading center and shipping point. Hayes Regional Airport opened in 1961. Interstate 70 reached Hayes in 1966. Today, Hayes is a commercial and educational center for Western Kansas. I'd just like to say that I got all this info from Wikipedia, so I apologize if any of the info is wrong. Well, I guess that was the first episode of the show. I'm going to park up and take the paperwork into the office, and even see if they have another delivery I can do. Being, I'm in the truck, I may as well make some money with it. I'd just like to say thank you for taking the time to watch the video, it's much appreciated. Please think about liking this video, sharing, and even consider subscribing. But for now, goodbye, and hopefully, I'll see you in the next one.